The sum of the angles in any triangle will always add up to 180 degrees. What we're going to talk about in this video is finding the sum of the angles in any polygon, even if it's not a triangle and has more than three sides. We're going to take a look over here at the quadrilateral ABCD and notice that it's been divided into two triangles by a diagonal. So since we have two triangles, we can think about what the sum of all the angles in this triangle is, and that's 180 degrees. And we can think about what the sum of all of the angles in this triangle is, and that's also 180 degrees because in any triangle, the angles sum to 180 degrees always. So altogether, this entire quadrilateral needs to sum to 360 degrees. So that's any quadrilateral, any four-sided shape will have a total of 360 degrees. And we did see this a little bit when we did our quadrilateral unit previously. Now we're gonna talk about a five-sided shape. So here we have a pentagon, which has one, two, three, four, five different sides. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at one vertex. We're gonna pick any vertex. I'm gonna pick angle A. and from vertex to point A, I'm going to draw all the possible diagonals that I can. So, oops, let me get my straight edge, and you can follow along with me. You can pause the video if you're getting a straight edge as well. And I'm going to connect from A to C. That's a diagonal because it's going from corner to corner. I'm going to connect from A to D, and that's a diagonal. It's going from corner to corner. If I connect from A to B, that's not a diagonal. That's on the side. Same thing happens if I connect from A to E. That's not a diagonal, that's just on the side of the pentagon. So by starting at a vertex and drawing all the possible diagonals I could, I have divided this pentagon into triangles. And there are one, two, three triangles that we have divided this pentagon into. So since each triangle has angles that sum to 180 degrees, we can figure out what the sum of all the angles in the pentagon is because since there are three triangles and each of the triangles is 180 degrees 180 times 3 is 540 degrees now we're going to move on to a six-sided shape a hexagon and we're going to do the same thing we're going to pick a vertex i'm just going to pick a again and using my straight edge i'm just going to draw all the diagonals i can so from a to c from a to d and from A to E. Once again, I can't connect from A to B because that would be just on the side. Same thing from A to F, it would just be on the side. So that is one, two, three, four triangles. One more than before, four triangles that we can divide our six-sided shape, our hexagon into. And once again, since any triangle measures 180 degrees, if we wanted to find the sum of all of the angles in this hexagon, we can just do 180 degrees and multiply it by the number of triangles by four. And that is 720 total degrees in the entire hexagon. So as you can see, a pattern was starting to develop between the sum of the angles in the polygons and the number of triangles that we could divide the polygon into. So let's complete the part of what we have so far. And once we find the pattern, we can continue the rest of it. So when we had the four-sided shape, the quadrilateral, we could divide it into two triangles. And the sum of the angles was 360 degrees. 180 times 2 is 360. The pentagon was a five-sided shape. And we could divide it into three triangles. And the sum of the angles was 540 degrees, 180 times 3. For the hexagon, the six-sided shape, we could divide it into four triangles. And we found that it was 720 degrees. 180 times the number of triangles times 4 was 720 degrees. A heptagon is a seven-sided shape. Do you see what the pattern is? Yeah, the number of triangles is increasing by 1. And also notice that it's 2 less than the number of sides that the polygon had. 1 is 2 less than 3. 2 is 2 less than 4. 3 is 2 less than 5, 4 is 2 less than 6, 5 is 2 less than 7. 
So since we can divide a seven-sided shape into five triangles, we can do five times 180, and we have 900. I'm going to quickly fill in the rest of the chart. Feel free to do it on your own as well. And if you're faster than me, you can definitely fast forward the video. So now that we've filled in the chart and we've seen the pattern between the number of sides, the number of triangles, and the sum of the interior angles, let's make this into a formula so that we can use it no matter how many sides our polygon has. And we're going to use n to refer to the number of sides in our shape. So in order to find the sum of the interior angles of any polygon, the number of triangles is going to be 2 less than the number of sides. So that's going to be n minus 2 for the number of triangles that you can divide it into. And since the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees, in order to find the sum of the interior angles of the polygon, we're going to do 180 degrees times the number of triangles, which is n minus 2. And this is our formula for the sum of the interior angles of any polygon, 180 times n minus 2, where n is the number of sides that our polygon has. Now we're going to talk about regular and non-regular polygons. So a regular polygon has all equal sides and angles. So I'm going to say that here. It is equilateral, a regular polygon. And it is also equiangular. That means all the angles are equal as well. If you hear the word regular, it means all equal sides and all equal angles. So here we have a pentagon. And we saw before that when we have a pentagon, the sum of the interior angles of any pentagon is going to be 540 degrees. What is the measure of one angle of a regular pentagon? Since the word regular is here, I know that all the angles of this pentagon are equal. So I can do 540, the sum of all the angles, and I can divide by 5 since if there's 5 sides, there's also 5 angles, to find just one of those angles. And that would be 108 degrees. Each angle of a regular pentagon would measure 108 degrees. What is the measure of one angle of a non-regular pentagon? Cannot be determined. I just abbreviated it. Cannot be determined. Because all of the angles could be different measurements if it's not regular. We know that together they have to total 540 degrees, but there's no telling what each individual one could be if it's not a regular pentagon. So let's summarize how to find the measure of each angle of a regular polygon. We know that to find the sum of the interior angles of any polygon, it's n minus 2 times 180. And then what we did was we divided by the number of sides, which is also the number of angles. And that gives you each angle of a regular polygon. But you don't really have to remember this formula. If you have the total sum of the interior angles, you can just divide by the number of sides, and then you'll have each individual angle. Okay, over here, we're going to begin filling in this chart over here together, and then you can finish up the rest of it when you submit a picture of this. So for triangle, the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees. If you have a regular triangle, 
If I divide that by three, which is an equilateral triangle, each angle would be 60 degrees. A quadrilateral has 360 degrees. If it's regular, then I can divide by four and each angle would be 90 degrees. So a rectangle is a regular quadrilateral because it has four 90 degree angles. We just did that before. That was 540 degrees. And if you divide that by five, if it's a regular pentagon, each angle is 108 degrees. We'll do the last two on the side of the chart together on this video. So if we have a hexagon, Seven hundred twenty is the sum of the interior angles, and if you forget, just do n minus two times one eighty. Six minus two times one eighty. That's what I just did. And then let me divide by the number of sides, which is six. And if it's a regular hexagon, each angle is going to be one hundred twenty degrees, each interior angle. And a heptagon. Let me do n minus two times one eighty. So seven minus two. That's five. Times one eighty. And if I divide by the total number of sides, which is seven, oops, I messed that one up. Let me fix that. So n minus two, seven minus two times 180. And then divide by the number of sides. So here we have that that is 900. And then if we divide by seven, it does not work out evenly, but it does say to round to the nearest tenth if needed. So that is 128.6 approximately degrees. Um, you can fill in the rest of them. We're going to fill in the n-gon one together. We already did that above. So the sum of the interior angles of any polygon is 180 times n minus 2. And if it's a regular polygon, you can find each individual interior angle by finding the sum of the interior angles and then dividing it by the number of angles that there are, which is the same as the number of sides, which is what we have been doing. Please fill in the rest of the chart on your own. And over here, there are a couple of practice questions. And sorry that my degree symbol looks funny over here when I copied it over here. But we'll do a couple together and then you can complete the rest. So we have a quadrilateral. And we know that the quadrilateral has 360 degrees. If you forgot, you can do n minus 2 times 180. You can do 4 minus 2 times 180. And we need to find the fourth angle. So I'm going to add up 73, 95, and 110. And then I'm going to subtract that sum, which is 278 from 360. And I got 82 degrees as the fourth angle. The next one says, find the sum of the interior angles of a polygon with 11 sides. So our formula for sum of the interior angles is n minus 2 times 180. And we don't know what, oh, we do know what n is. n is. We know that n is 11. What we don't know is the sum of the interior angles. So I'm going to replace n with 11 because we do know that n is 11. It's an 11 sided shape. And then I can put into my calculator. So 11 minus 2 is 9. 9 times 180 is 1,620 degrees. So the sum of the interior angles of a polygon with 11 sides would be 1,620 degrees. Um, the next one is very similar, except you're finding each angle of a 20-sided polygon. So after you find the sum of all of the interior angles, you can just divide by 20 to get one angle. So you can do that one. Number four, if the sum of the measure of the interior angles of a polygon is 2,340, find the number of sides. So find the sum of the interior angles of 180 times n minus 2. And we don't know what n is, but we do know that the sum is equal to 2,340. So let's solve. I'm going to divide 180 by both sides. So 2,340 divided by 180. 
that's easier than actually distributing it in. So here I have n minus 2 is equal to 13. Add 2 to both sides, n is equal to 15. And if you wanted to double check that this was the correct number of sides, you can plug it back into the formula, 180 times n minus 2, and you can see that you get 2,340. Okay, and you can check out number 5 as well.